Today, if Zoom will cooper cooperate, we're going to find some antiderivatives. And I want to focus on the big rule. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. And also, the integral of 1 over x dx is natural log of absolute value of x plus c. So what we get out of this is that if we can write terms, let's say, with powers of x, yikes. If we can write terms with just powers of x, then maybe we should. So what I mean is when we have an expression like x squared plus 5x minus 3 over x squared, we have this quotient, but we don't have a quotient rule for antiderivatives. But if we can write powers of x, then we should. So our strategy here is to distribute the, x squared, the 1 over x squared to the three terms. So think of this as x squared over x squared plus 5x over x squared minus 3 over x squared. So here we are just using the distributive property. And since we can write terms with powers of x, then we should write terms with powers of x. So we actually end up integrating 1 plus 5 over x minus 3. And I'm going to write this one as x to the negative 2 dx. Because now I can just use the big rule. Add one of the exponents, divide by the new exponent. So now we can add one to the exponent. So here, we're, we, all we did here was a little bit of algebraic sleight of hand. So we were just doing some algebra, did a little more algebra. Now we're doing the calculus thing. So it's been all, all algebra up to this point. That's why I still need to write integral dx. So the integral of 1 is just x. Uh, the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x, and it's multiplied by 5. So 5 natural log absolute x. And we add 1 to the exponent for x to the negative 2. So we get x to the negative 1. And then we divide by the new exponent, and that makes a plus. So specifically, negative 3x to the negative 2. We add 1 to the exponent. That becomes negative 1, and divide by the new exponent. And so that's why we get the plus 3x to the negative 1. Any questions? So if we can write terms with powers of x, then maybe we should. Other situations where this will happen is if we've got some exponents going on. So for example, let's suppose we have the integral of uh, let's go with uh, x minus now let's change a little bit. Let's have, say we have 2x minus 3 to the third power, dx. So let's make this 5. So do a little prime number shifting. Changed my mind. I want to back off. I don't want to do this one yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Zoom being a jerk was really messing with me this morning. Actually, because it wasn't this morning, everything has been going fine. Then all of a sudden, it decides this afternoon, I'm going to mess with them. So let's suppose we have x squared minus 5 to the third power. So what we have is a composition of functions. There's an x squared minus 5 to the third power. Um, so I, I, the reason I usually leave the x to the negative 1 is that I want to remind myself that 1 over x, the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. So I usually leave 1 over x as it is. But then I write everything else in a way that I can add 1 of the exponents, divide by the new exponent. So as long as we remember that the integral of 5x to the negative 1 is natural log absolute value of x, then we're good. But I like to make it stand out a little different, because I'm going to do a different thing for a 1 over x than I am for a 1 over x squared.
So that's why I write them differently. So in with x squared minus five to the third power, uh, rather than try to integrate this as it stands, I'm just gonna apply my, my idea that if we can write terms with just powers of x, then maybe we should. So I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna multiply this all out. So I'm gonna have x squared uh, cubed plus three times x squared squared times a negative five plus three times x times the negative five squared plus the negative five cubed. This is just going to be some algebraic sleight of hand like we did with the distributive property. I'm gonna multiply out x squared minus five to the third. So I could just be abstract and say, use the distributive property, but what I'm doing is I'm multiplying out the x squared minus five to the third. And I use Pascal's triangle to do it. Uh, well, binomial expansion. So that's me being not so snarky about it. And so we're just gonna have an x squared to the third plus three x squared squared times a negative five plus three x squared times a negative five squared plus a negative five to the third. So I'm just doing a binomial expansion. You could also break this out to x squared minus five three times and FOIL the first one and then FOIL the last one in. I like to binomial expansion because algebra is awesome. So I get an x to the sixth, um, three times negative five is negative 15, x to the fourth. Oops, this is still an integral. Um, negative five squared is 25 times three is 75 x squared. And negative five to the third is a negative 125 to x. So in this case, it wasn't a lot to just multiply this out. So that's our strategy. So now we can add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So we get a one seventh x to the seventh minus 15 over six x to the, oh, it's 15 over five x to the third. Um, oops, to the fifth. Add one of the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Plus 75 over three, x to the third, minus 125 over two, x, uh, x, not over two. Minus 125, x plus c. And then we'll say, gosh, this looks terrible. So I'll replace the 15 over five with the minus three. 75 over three is 25. Yeah, I was a complete mess on that. What the heck was wrong with me? Adding one to four, four plus one is three. No, five. Channeling some Monty Python right there. Four plus one is three. Five, sir, five. So once again, I use the binomial expansion, um, but all I'm doing, all we're doing is taking x squared minus five and multiplying three of them. So multiplying the first two, I get, uh, actually I multiply the second two. Yikes, what's two plus two? Four, minus five x squared minus another five x squared plus 25. So x to the fourth minus 10 x squared plus 25. But then I have to multiply this by an x squared minus five again. So I get an x to the sixth um, minus 10 x to the fourth plus 25 x to the fourth minus five x to the fourth plus 50 x squared. That's supposed to be squared. Um, minus 125. 
So that gets me to this. I'm just multiplying it out. Nothing up my sleeves. Presto. Any questions? Can you explain what you did at the top? I'm not understanding how you get x squared to the third plus three times x squared squared. Uh, uh, up here, I'm using a shortcut to uh, just multiplying everything out with the binomial expansion. So, so binomial expansion is taking something like x plus y and raising it to the n power. So if we have x plus y to the zero power, that just gives us one. And then x plus y to the first power is just x plus y. And then x plus y squared is x squared plus two xy plus y squared. So the pattern that we want to know, notice, is that the first, at the first term in the expansion is going to be counting down, while the second term in the expansion is going to be counting up in power. So x squared, x to the first, x to the zero, y to the zero, y to the first, y squared. When we get to x plus y to the third power, the x squared, or sorry, it starts off with an x cubed, then there's a coefficient three, x squared, y to the first, plus another three, x, y squared, plus a y cubed. So the x's count down from three, three, two, one, zero. The y's are counting up from zero, zero, one, two, three. The coefficients all come from Pascal's triangle. which has a one and then a one, one, and then a one, two, one, and then a one, three, three, one. To get an entry in Pascal's triangle, it always starts with a one, and then this entry will be the sum of the two above it. One plus three is four, three plus three is a six, three plus one is a four, then it ends with a one. So these are the coefficients of, the one, four, six, four, one are the coefficients of x plus y to the fourth. So I'll have x to the fourth, and x cubed y, and x squared y squared, x to the first, y to the third, and then a y to the fourth. And these will be the coefficients. One, four, six, four, one. And this informs us what the next line, uh, uh, we build the next line of Pascal's triangle, which would be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So if I go to multiply out x plus y to the fifth, I'll start off with an x to the fifth, then there'll be a term x to the fourth y, then there'll be a term x to the third y squared, then x squared y to the third, then x y to the fourth, and then finally y to the fifth. The x's are counting down, the y's are counting up. The coefficients come from Pascal's triangle. One, five, 10, 10, five, one. Any questions? Cool. So that's why I expanded with x squared minus five to the third. I just used Pascal's triangle where x squared was the first thing. So x squared to the third, second, first, and zero. Then negative five is the second term. So it's zero to the first, to the second, to the third. And then the coefficients are one, three, three, one from this line of, our, of, Pascal, of the binomial expansion. Any questions? Super cool multiplying out polynomials. How many people were exposed to binomial expansions? 
and Pascal's, specifically Pascal's triangle on how we could look at powers of binomials. Anybody do that in your algebra class? Or in your pre-calculus class? Usually it comes up only briefly. Only briefly is, is usually is the most popular answer. Um, but it's not emphasized a lot, mainly because there's a fallback where if we want to x plus y to the fifth, we could just line up five of them and start multiplying them out. And then you see it once, and then uh, you get into a later class like pre-cal, and the pre-cal teacher says, hey, did you do Pascal's triangle? And the algebra teacher's like, oh, yeah, once. And then they're like, oh, okay, good enough. And it's just kind of, there's all these things that we end up not knowing. But then we get into calculus, and then the cal but it's an opportunity for calculus teachers who are like, oh, hey, did you guys do this? And the class is like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, awesome. I get to do it then. Woo. Some calculus teachers are dicks about it, and they're like, oh, uh, I can't believe that you didn't do that to make you feel bad about stuff that you didn't get taught. But that's, that's a jerk move. You shouldn't do that. Um, Pascal's triangle is actually super useful. First of all, it's giving us all these coefficients in binomials that we want to expand on. Another thing to notice is that um, if we look at the five, if we think of this as five, four, three, two, one, and zero, the entries in this fifth line of Pascal's triangle tell you the number of ways of putting five thing, of choosing, sorry, not putting in order, of choosing five things out of five things, or four things out of five things, or three things out of five things. So this 10, we can also interpret as the number of ways to choose three things out of five things. It's the number of ways to choose three things out of five things. So the coefficients are just gonna be the coefficients. If we took x plus y to the fifth and just started multiplying it out, these are the coefficients that would, we would end up with. So they, they, they happen to follow this pattern in Pascal's triangle, but these are the coefficients that would happen if we just started multiplying things out. So if we take an x plus y to the fourth power, for example, Oh, four, did I say four? If we just started multiplying this out, this is gonna be x squared plus two xy plus y squared. If we multiply this again by an x plus y, we'll get x cubed plus two x squared y plus xy squared. And then, so notice that I've multiplied everything through by x, but the coefficients are still one, two, and one. So the reason that the coefficients work out the way they do, I'm going to go through and multiply by y, and that's going to take the 1, 2, and 1 and shift it over one space. Because the first thing is going to be plus 1x squared y plus 2xy squared plus 1y cubed. And when we add these together, we get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. So that's why it's a process of adding the one and two together to get the three, adding the two and one together to get the three. Because if I take this x cubed plus three x squared y plus three x y squared plus y cubed and multiply it by another x plus y, I'm gonna multiply everything by x first. So I'm gonna get an x to the fourth plus three x cubed y plus three x squared y squared plus x y cubed. There's one, three, three, one. The next line is going to be another 1, 3, 3, 1, but shifted over, where the 3 and the 3 get added, the 3 and the, uh, the 3 get, sorry, the 3 and the 1 get added, the 3 and the 3 get added, the 1 and the 3 get added, and then the 1 is all by itself. Because multiplying through by y gives me an x cubed y plus 3xy, uh, x 
sorry. So uh, I'm going to get an x cubed y plus 3x squared y squared plus 3xy cubed plus y to the 4. So I have the 3 and the 1 to make a 4x cubed y. The 3 and 3 make a 6x squared y squared. The 1 and the 3 make a 4xy cubed. And then y to the 4th is alone x to the fourth is alone because we always start off with ones at the beginning and at the end. So that's why, the, that's why Pascal's triangle works out the way it does. So the other interesting thing about Pascal's triangle, aside from getting us to multiply uh, binomial expansions, is that the coefficients themselves are tell us a way to count things. So this is the, the, the 10 here is the number of way to choose three things out of five things. If you have five things, let's say A, B, C, D, and E, there are 10 ways you can choose two of them. 10 ways to choose two of them. So if I have five students, I need to pick two students. There are 10 different ways I can do that. I can go A, B. A C, A D, A E. I could say B C, B D, B E, uh, C D, C E, and D E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different ways to choose three to choose three things out of five things. Oh, I said three out of five. This is equivalent to choosing two things out of five things. And that's a combinatorial, sh combinatorial shift. It's the same thing as uh, choosing three things out of five things is equivalent to choosing two things out of five things. Because when you choose two things out of five things, that's the same as choosing three not to include. So once I choose two students out of the five, that's also equivalent to choosing three students to not be, to, to not choose three students. Does Pascal's triangle also work if it wasn't just x plus y, say it was 5x plus 6y? Yes, because the x's and the y's can be whatever they want. So that's what we did in this previous one, where instead of x, I had x squared. So the powers were all the same. I had a x cubed, x squared, x, and then nothing. But inside that x was an x squared. And the same thing with the y. The y was a negative 5. So I had a negative five, negative five squared, and negative five to the third. That's what happened in this half. So they can be whatever they want, but there can only be two of them because it's a binomial expansion. Any questions? That's the fun part of calculus is that we get to highlight things that didn't show up in your pre-calculus educations. One of the things that makes this class fun. You've been a lot of places, but you haven't seen everything. It's like being a tourist in San Francisco. If you grew up in San Francisco, you probably haven't been to Alcatraz unless someone you know has come here on vacation. Any questions? That was a fun detour into the binomial expansion. So thanks for asking about that. That's always more fun. All right, hopefully Zoom is just like having a little bit of a hiccup and that things will be back to normal tomorrow. If not, then I'll just check. If uh, you try to start the Zoom meeting tomorrow and nothing is happening, check the announcements because I'll put up an announcement say, that says, Zoom has betrayed me. And then I'll let you know where we're going from there. But barring that, so that's it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow, and thanks for playing.